Hey, Steve Mignani here doing the Junkyard Crawl at Bernardston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts with a 1960 Chevy Impala. Now, 1960 was the uh, third model year for Impala, which launched in 1958. And in 58, the Impala was Chevrolet's most exclusive vehicle, short of a Corvette, available only as a two-door, fastback, or a convertible. But by 1960, the Impala had kind of moved main market, if you will, and every body style was available in 1960, except for a two-door post. You get wagons, two doors, four doors, convertibles in the Impala lineup as it really proliferated for 1960. Now in 1960, full-size Chevrolets accounted for 84% of all Chevrolet sales. Keep in mind that the only car this had to compete with was the Corvair or the Corvette. The Nova didn't come along till 62, the Chevelle till 64, the Camaro till 67. So again, in 60, full-size Chevys were the main sellers, 84%. Now here's the thing to keep in mind. This is a 1960 Chevrolet uh, guide. And we can see here at the top, that's the four-door sedan with the wraparound rear window. And they, it's actually a hard top if you ask me. But below it, we see the Bel Air and of course the Biscaynes and even the Nomad, which by this point in time, that wagon was a four-door, no more two-door Nomad wagon nomenclature. But again, this is 1960, and that wraparound rear window was an unusual body style. This one here is a more mainstream four-door sedan with the fixed B pillar and the less exotic, sort of just a wraparound rear window, but not the big piece that we see on that other body type. But again, as an Impala, we see the running gazelle, the Impala right here with the crossed flags and uh, the word Impala would have lived here. And if you know your 65 GTOs, a lot of folks looking down on a GTO hood, this form right here is pretty darn close to a GTO hood if you look straight down on a 65 GTO hood. So you gotta wonder if the same stylist maybe was here and at Pontiac, hard to say. But again, this is a four-door, and in total, 497,048 four-door full-size Chevys were made. By contrast, only 204,687 two doors were built in 1960. So again, the four door was the most popular body style as baby boomer families needed a full size backseat to get out and about. Now this one here is again, pretty well crunched out. Somewhere along the line, the uh, roof was separated at the, uh, the A pillar right here and somebody harvested the entire driver's side of this vehicle. But inside we can see this one had the power glide transmission the big brake pedal tells us this is not a three-speed manual car or a four-speed manual for that matter. More on that in just a second. But here, the, uh, the steering column here with the directionals and uh, the really exotic. I love how the Impala dashboard instrument panel right here, this magnesium structure right here, sort of like right out of a, I don't know, a Phantom jet fighter or maybe an F-84 or something like that. But very cool stuff. Again, magnesium casting here with uh, very much of a fighter plane vibration to it. Uh, under the hood on this one, we could have anything from the uh, 235 six banger to the 283 small block to the 348 turbo thrust engine, which was a big block W engine. Let's see what we have here. Look at this, man. This grill is nice. The rest of this car is pretty well mangled, but that grill is in pretty nice shape, complete with the little clear Lucite panel in the middle. Front bumper is not horrible. Uh, munched on that side, but man, the rust has taken its toll, but other bits on this thing are still not too shabby. All right, let's look underneath. Drum roll, please. Watch my tetanus shot here. All right, okay, yeah, small block. No W motor here. We can see here the classic small block Chevy with the pressed in studs here. Uh, if you put heavy duty valve springs on these things, the fulcrum right here sometimes pulls these studs out at 6,000 RPM as you're making way from second to third gear or whatever it might be. But again, this one's fairly mundane. It does have the Ram's horn exhaust manifolds, which are more streamlined than the logs that were used in 55 and 56. These arrived in 57 on Corvettes, but trickled their way on down to pretty much all full-sized, well, all applications on the V8. Uh, for 1957 onward. Uh, master cylinder, no power brakes on this one. That cast iron single circuit unit right there is bone stock. This one was a manual steering car, no power steering in effect here. Uh, but early effort here at the fan shroud, this one here made of metal, and that would have helped to direct the uh, cooling flow through the core of the radiator instead of dissipating it in a non-wind tunnel type deal. Now, speaking of the engines in these things, this is Motor Life Magazine, February of 1960, with a test of many of the new cars, including the four-door Impala inside. And in here we find what they have to say about it. 
right here. Yeah. Uh, it says here, testing the 60s Chevrolets, and it says the Impala hardtop, this big, high-powered and luxurious automobile proves just how Chevy has expanded from the concept of cheap transportation into the lower levels of medium-priced luxury. Now, if we look at the picture of the engine, that is the 348. That's the 280 horsepower four barrel, the turbo jet, or I think they call it a turbo thrust. And they had more to say here. It says the window vents are crank operated, a Chevy exclusive in its field and caused very little wind noise, even at high cruising speeds. Now on this one, the zero to 60 came up in 10.7 seconds. And again, it was equipped with a 348, 250 horsepower, single four barrel engine. Now, interesting to see is that in 1960, there's a lot of different options you can get on your Chevy. And this is basically an article how to get the most from your Chevrolet. And it says here, since 1955, Chevy has zoomed from the position of being a rather uninspiring car for the proverbial little old lady from Pasadena or expendable transportation for traveling salesmen to that of glamor boy in the popular three category, where once one bought transportation pure and very simple, one can now buy anything from pure economy to absolutely fierce and sizzling performance. You can see right here, it says here, uh, you can the advantage anything you want, including a factory four-speed transmission. And here are the options right here on the left-hand side, it says here, talking about gear ratios, three regular rear end gears, 336, 355, 370. Normally these come with power glide, three-speed and manual, and three-speed with overdrive. But there's nothing in the rule book says you can't mix these around to suit yourself. And of course, uh, here it is, the heavy-duty clutch right here, available for the manual transmission. Uh, owners in San Francisco and Denverites would like the heavy-duty clutch. But most important, four-speed manual. 1959, first year, for a four on the floor based on the uh, T10 transmission. It says, in the realm of the RPO, the regular production option, is the one-numbered RPO 685 to justify the justly famous four-speed all-synchro gearbox. Normally, as far as sedans go, this is teamed only with the larger 348, but the chances are if you fight hard enough, you can get it team with your 283 as well. And again, here's all these cool things. Uh, dual exhaust, which is RPO 220. Uh, the triple carburetor 348, optional right there. The T10 four-speed, there it is right there, RPO 685. Pause traction, RPO 675. Heavy-duty rear spring. So even taxi equipment right here. You can actually build your Chevy from mild to wild, heavy-duty, light-duty. You choose. And uh, cool stuff. You know, getting back to those quarter windows, you know, it is true that most cars with quarter vent windows like this, they were manual. You had to pop them out and latch them on your own. But if we come around here, we'll see that Chevrolet actually had window cranks right here. Not for the big windows, they had that too. But also, here's the big window right there. Oh, I guess that's the end of that. <laughs> there we go. But this little guy right here, which, yeah, still works. Kind of cool. That's something you've seen on a Cadillac or a more expensive GM product, but standard equipment on Impala. Kind of cool. Now, getting further into this Impala, we'll notice here at the back, the X frame, will Super Shane Richardson will we'll swap spots here and take a peek inside and we'll see down the middle of this car, there's a frame that goes right here, right down the drive shaft tunnel. This is Chevrolet's X-Frame, 1958 through 64, and uh, kind of controversial because on the side, you know, the traditional perimeter frame isn't there. Now, these do have a structure which kind of protects you in a side impact, and the remains of that structure we can see right here, and you can see it's semi-box structure, this thing right here, but again, the uh, void between this and that X-frame is taken up by the seats and the passengers, potentially. But again, this has coil springs all the way around. And we can see at the back of this one, to curb axle hop, on the right-hand side is an anti-pinion rise arm, this thing right here. Now, four and nine drag racers in 62, three, and four used to add another one of these to that side so that both sides of the differential would be tamed on a hard launch from uh, pinion rise. And this is also a dropout center. And sometimes on these things, if you feel the letter P cast in right down here, it's a pause attraction. I don't feel it here, but pause attraction was indeed an option. And those center sections with Corvette restorers are like a thousand bucks. Very rare when found. But this one here, this Impala, has perhaps galloped its last gallop. I don't think it's going to be coming back from this grave anytime too soon, but that grill still looks pretty decent. But just remember, this was uh, Chevrolet's the luxury leader in the low-priced field, is what Chevy called the Impala. 
And again, 497,408 four-door full-size Chevys were built in 1960. And again, baby boomer families, chances are you knew somebody who had one of these, maybe five people who had one of these in the driveway. Now, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mag's YouTube channel. Uh, share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up, a like, and be sure to hit the bell so you know when the next video comes out, which is tomorrow morning.